Welcome MMA Fancast. My name is Luke Basin, and I am honored to have a friend of the show, a friend of mine and a friend of the show, back on the show. But before we introduce the new amateur heavyweight champion from Bizarro, we're going to pause here and welcome back everybody that is already a subscriber to the channel. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe so that you can see more of Big Man Dan. Big Man Dan Albright, welcome back to the show, champ. Great to have you. Hey, thanks for having me. Congratulations, sir. Um, I've gotten to watch a lot of your fights. Wasn't there for this one, but you fought uh, just recently for the Bizarro uh, Heavyweight Championship. Let's jump into it. You've already faced off against Cody Gamble before in the 247 Fighting Championship cage. I was able to be uh, calling the action for that, and it was a great back-and-forth fight. You ended up winning that one by split decision. How did the championship fight go? What did it feel like rematching against him? And you got a unanimous decision, a better, uh, a better victory in the sense of a split decision is still a win, but obviously you even did more in your rematch against him for the belt. So take it away. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely, it's definitely strange. You don't see a whole lot of amateurs that fight each other twice. Uh, I mean, that that's pretty weird itself. But yeah, I mean, me and Cody fought back in 2021 went to a split decision, you know, it was a tough match. Um, and even then, like, day of, we thought we were doing advanced rules, and then they told us day of that we're not. We're still going to be doing novice rules. Uh, I think that was the biggest thing for me, this fight. Uh, like, the first round was real similar to our last one. Cody was just kind of trying to hold me against the cage, you know, attempted a takedown or two, but I was able to, you know, stop all that. And the second round, you know, I was able to turn it on a little more, let my striking go. Uh, I was able to get him down. And, uh, you know, and that was the biggest thing for me is because last time I took him down, but I'm just controlling him, not really throwing much hands. But mm. this time around, I thought I was going to get stopped in the second round because I had him head against the cage and I was just trying to throw bombs. And, uh, I mean, and Cody, he is a competitor. I mean, for, like, the, the hands that I was throwing at him in that second round, like, he was hanging in there. Um, you know, the third round, uh, you know, still the same thing. I just, uh, like, uh, Coach Dan was just telling me to let my hands go. Uh, I don't th think I let him go as much as I should have, uh, but I was just throwing bombs and we were able to get that victory. Well, congratulations, champ, on getting that victory. Uh, obviously, the first rematch of your career, like you said, it's a little unique to have amateurs rematching cool that the rule set bumped up from novice the last time you guys fought to advanced amateur. So let's talk about that. Not just against Cody, but how do you think the advanced amateur uh, rule set favored you? Like, what do you see going forward in using this advanced amateur rule set? I mean, uh, for me, it's like, well, all my, uh, all my wins set for the two with Gamble have been by TKO. Mm. Uh, normally in the second round. So when I, my first fight actually, which was eight years ago, uh, which is kind of funny, uh, I, I won by a, a TKO in the second round. Um, my fight with Justin Pippins, TKO in the second round. And my fight prior to this in, uh, for the Art of War cage fighting was a TKO in the second round. So, I mean, ground and pound, I guess, is kind of my thing. Ground and bound really is your thing. That's what makes this very exciting. And even though you didn't get the stoppage that you thought you might have been able to get in the second round, doing ground and pound is either going to have you win by TKO or it looks great for the judges' scorecard for, for a yeah. decision, right? It's it's still very, very effective. And if you don't get the stoppage, Cody Gamble, like you said, is a tough competitor. He weathered it, but it still adds up a lot uh, on the score uh, on, on the judges' scorecard. So – uh, for you, I believe this is the first title of your career. How much of that made a difference? Was it a mental thing or did, did you care? Did you not care? I know sometimes people really care about it because it, it does add a level of accomplishment. And some people, you know, they, they, they don't put as much weight on that. Um, so what are your thoughts as far as that goes? I mean, I mean I'm definitely proud of it, but I, I know even before the fight, uh, it wasn't something that I was going to, it wasn't making me more nervous knowing that I was fighting for a belt. Uh, Cause either way, it's still a fight, whether there's a belt on the line or not, you know? So I, I try to do the same thing each day of the fight, even day before the fight uh, with my warm ups and everything else. You know, I treat every fight the same. 
every fight like is a championship fight which makes sense like that's part of when you went all those you know eight years ago you were fighting without a camp without uh you know without a a team around coaches. yeah right? without Nothing. coaches without a corner so it's great that part of what makes gorilla house the coaching obviously champ champ i i will never get tired of calling yeah. the, the most handsome champ champ uh champ pennsylvania has ever seen um but anyhow you are a great example of what having a wonderful gym great coaches great training partners like grill house around you can really do but another thing that they do so well is i've seen debuters i was called i called the action of cam now the former um the the, the former uh, amateur champ for 247 cam lamora agar i was there when he made his debut and what's cool about great coaches is they coach somebody who's making their debut or their you know seventh eighth fight the same right the level the intensity to to be ready and and that's what cam showed and that's what you show um that really every fight at this point going forward really is a championship caliber fight even if they don't all have the title on it so speaking of that it's been under a week um and obviously it's great that you got this win um your coaches are really good at kind of laying out a game plan is the game plan that you take a couple more fights at, at amateur heavyweight there's a lot that that changes when you go pro because those big boys are now throwing knees and I'll, there's a lot that can happen at, at, at Everyway Pro. Obviously, it's a very exciting division. Has there been talk, or is it really just about enjoying the next month and a half so, get through the new year, and then figure it out going forward? Because you're obviously a very exciting heavyweight to watch. Yeah, I mean, I know uh, 247's got that vacant heavyweight belt, and uh, I wouldn't mind if uh, that Julian Planner ever comes back. I'll fight him for that before I end up going pro. Wonderful. I love helping the legendary matchmaker, Jim Mooney, uh, put together fights. He watches this show. We used to do this show together back before he got so busy doing matchmaking. So uh, big fan of the show in, in the legendary matchmaker, Jim Mooney. And he loves it. I, when I say loves, I mm -hmm. think sometimes he tolerates me matchmaking mm -hmm. on this show. But that that sounds exciting. I think at one point, Julian had was was at the, the point of going pro. I don't know if he was going to take another amateur, but that's why I'm not a matchmaker. That's why he is, but it certainly sounds like a very exciting uh, potential matchup. Um, I'll make sure, you know, that that, that at least gets uh, to Jim. Obviously, you, you know that as well. So that yeah. would be super exciting. If, it, if it's not against Julian, is there somebody else you'd want, or are you mainly calling out for the for the title fight? Yeah, I mean, if uh, if that if they have that uh, title vacant, I'll fight for it. Come you know next uh, you know April or May, next show they're having then, I'll be all yeah. about it. They've announced the next several shows. Um, I believe there's a February show, and then uh, well, they just announced it. It's on their. I downloaded it. I saved yeah. the, the the photo. So they do have several. April twentieth is the next big card that they're going to be at the casino at the Meadows. That's the April twentieth card. And then there's a February 24th range card, I believe. And that's um, up a little bit closer to your side of Pittsburgh. It's a new yeah. Murrayville, maybe. It's a it's a new location that they announced. That might even be a little bit closer to where you're from. But very, very exciting. In my knowledge, there has never been an amateur heavyweight title holder. You call it vacant, which is true. But it would also be yeah. the inaugural because there's never been there's never been a title holder for the amateur heavyweight. So what a great opportunity that would be in either February or April. I think both those cards have been announced. You can, you can check that out. So that's awesome. So uh, I'm trying to think, is there, is, is there anything that you still want to say? I'm trying to think it was there a highlight, like, like a moment that really stood out to you, whether it was getting the belt or just, you know, how dominant you were in the second round, like what 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 really stood out for you in the fight, and then I, I guess, I'd say probably yeah. just the the second round, and then even for me winning this belt, and then just having my my team there, like I you know having my coaches, I had Ray Ross and Darren Cassidy, uh, Ethan Goss was there, and then also uh, Tyler Divert, like they were all there, and it was just you know it was pretty special, you know coming from a guy that didn't have a gym, didn't have coaches, you know before a fight, wrapping my own hands, like. 
and be able to, you know, be a part of that team, you know, be a part of that, you know, the grow house community is it's amazing. It's awesome. Yeah, it really is. I mean, there are, there are incredible coaches. It's an incredible gym, but I know because both coaches have told me how much they, they're a fan of you. You know, it goes both ways. I think that's what yeah. really makes your, your discipline. You're still serving um, in, in, in the army. So like, you've got that discipline, you've got that mindset to really follow the instructions. But I think, Every gym, you know, the mat factory, obviously you just took, took on a mat factory opponent. Um, all the gyms that, that are super active in this area, that they have that, that, that family component. And I'd say the real house gym really has that, that tight knit group that really works well together. And um, I don't know, I'm trying to remember back. I can't remember if you were there in person to watch Ethan Wolverine Goss become champ champ, but it, oh, it, yeah. So what was what was I think I might have already asked you this because of how exciting it was to see it. Actually, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we probably already talked about this, but we'll wrap yeah. up on it because yeah. you mentioned how great the gym is, and why not inflate his head a little bit bigger yeah. <laughs> into Christmas? We might as well make him feel even better about himself. So what was what was that like watching one of the the, the original you know uh, the super experience? I think it was his 18th professional fight, super experience legend, and really the heart of of um of the gym of gorillas what was that like and what does that give for you as far as seeing where your trajectory could go yeah i mean seeing a guy like ethan who like me and him have you know similar lifestyle like we both work full-time jobs we got families uh and you know be able to see him in the gym work as hard as he does you know and then show it out there in the cage especially getting both of those belts you know being as redneck as redneck can be uh, and, you know, doing all the things he's doing is pretty amazing. You know, yeah. it gets me excited to, you know, see my career and how it turns out. I'm excited for whatever's left in your amateur career and then obviously your pro career to come. Um, it is really cool. I, I think it's it's a hats off to everybody who's doing the full-time job family because that's more important than just fighting and then also making fighting work. So congratulations to you. This is Really, now we're under a month away for Christmas, so a uh, uh, happy, merry, merry, um, happy yeah. Thanksgiving was last week. Early <laughs> merry Christmas to you, if my brain catches up from, <laughs> from last week. And uh, did you fight before? Was this a couple days after Thanksgiving, this fight? This, this was the day before Thanksgiving. This so was the really, evening, the Thanksgiving uh, Eve. Okay. So I do yeah, have so one, I won the belt and I rushed home. <laughs> I do have one quick question about that, because I do know that there was that, you know, uh, the Thanksgiving Eve fight. What was that like? You're celebrating, you're celebrating winning a belt, but you're also getting home to celebrate with your with your wife and family yeah. because Thanksgiving is even bigger than whether or not you won yeah. the belt. So how was that? <laughs> I was tired. I didn't get home until four in the morning. And my whole thought process is I, I told everybody at the gym, I was like, as soon as the fight's over, we're going to get our pictures. And we're going home. We're going home. Well, you know what you should have said to your wife when you get home at 4 a.m.? Wake me up when there's turkey to go in. Right? Yeah. Don't wake me up until there's food ready to go down. But, wow. But that also shows not only your commitment, but that shows your coaches' commitment. They all have families, you know, all your corners. So it really does show that that tight-knit out of Gorilla House. Just an incredible thing. Always an honor to have you on the show. I think – You've got a long way to go because Ethan the Wolverine Goss, not only is he champ champ, not only is he the person that's fought the most in the 247 cage, even more importantly, he is yeah. the number one interviewed fighter on this yeah. podcast. I know that matters to people. And so you have a long way to go, but maybe we'll just yeah. keep having you back. Ethan has, Ethan has said that he'll be, he'll keep coming back on the show, even when he's you know, in his eighties, just to keep that, just to keep that going. But it truly is an honor interviewing anyone from Gorilla House. And uh, congratulations again, uh, uh, an early Merry Christmas to you and your family. And uh, congrats, champ. You've been listening to MMA Fancast with Luke Payson and the new Bizarro Heavyweight Amateur Champion, Big Man Dan. All right, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks again. Got it, brother. Take care. Hey, bye.